All right, so here's an update on the PAL trade. This was our previous winner for us in through here. Uh, it sold off on earnings, and I put it back out on alert when it started to move back up uh, at 3.75 a share. You can see that the price action bottoms out at 3.47. So let me just grab a line there, give you a good visual representation. So the price action bottoms out at 3.47, and the stock starts to move back up. Uh, you can see the good price action in through here before the stock ever has a bullish run in September. Uh, so, you know, that's where traders come back in and start to gobble up shares when a stock takes a beating. You look for big time support and that was it. Uh, unfortunately, the day after the alert, uh, it pulled back on Friday. You know, a lot of people don't want to hold uh, a palladium stock over the weekend. It's a lot like holding a gold or silver stock. It's a little bit risky. So anyways, you get some... Uh, selling, I don't know if you'd call it profit taking on a move from 347 to 381. So just some, you know, panic selling into the close. No other real reason to get rid of the stock. Uh, I dropped a little bit um, when it pulled back and added more later on to bring my average down. So I'm averaged in at 365. I'll do that if I think a stock has a good chance of moving up. And those of you who have been on the list a long time know it's a strategy of mine. Uh, you can't always pick the entries and exits properly, but if you have a lot of confidence that the stock is going to move back up, then there's nothing wrong with selling some shares and buying back in at a lower rate. You decrease the loss and you increase the gain, so it's a win-win. I've done it before and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, email me if you have questions on that strategy. Today's price action was interesting. The markets you know, were obviously predicted to get hammered today, and they did. Uh, it sells off very early on, dropping to a low of 333. You know, but then the buyers just came in in hordes, and the stock charged forward all day long. You know, eventually, you know, it was nailing one uh, 371. You know, right into the close, one minute before the close, and uh, you had a couple of 368s fly. You know, just before the market wrapped up, and then in the after hours, you saw some trading between 368 and 370. So a very good sign. We'll want to see continue continuation tomorrow. Palladium is still uh, up, and uh, hopefully that'll continue to move forward. But I, I really think the overall play here is, you know, an oversold stock. You have you know, your RSI, your MACD, and your accumulation distribution. So your RSI stands for Relative Strength Index, and when it's below this 30 line, it means that it's oversold. There are, you know, sellers have dominated the stock, and you can see that, you know, from my initial alert in through here, you know, in through here, um, the stock was never oversold. It's obviously dipped down into these levels as a result of, you know, the poor earnings and uh, the perceived you know history of the stock but all that really matters is what's going to happen in the future and anytime you get a stock like this in and around you know really good price action support again you know really good price action support and through there there's a good chance that it's going to turn back up in the short term even if you see some temporary dips so i'm going to still ride that thought and i think it's going to move forward back to the uh, indicators which i don't put a lot of thought into but it's good to explain uh, you know, below this 30 line is oversold. So the relative strength of the stock, which is a momentum indicator, is oversold. You know, the stock trades between 0 and 100, or the RSI does anyways. It, you know, varies between 0 and 100. So it's considered an oscillator, which means it has an upper and a lower limit. Whereas, you know, something like the accumulation distribution does not have an upper and lower and lower limit so it's not an oscillator I wouldn't recommend any more than three technical indicators anyways let's get very specific this is your uh, momentum indicator and it's oversold when it crosses that 30 line it starts to enter into buy territory for traders cross the 50 line and that's you know what is considered the center line or you know a pretty good buy signal and the 70 line is usually very bullish on a stock so you can see, you know, when the stock gets up and through here, you can see it's making a nice three-day move from the 472 to 588 level. And see the RSI correlates with the volume, you know, so it's getting very bullish in through here. Hope to see something, you know, moving through the 30 towards the 50 as the stock trades from, you know, 370s up to the 380s of $4 range. I'd be happy with anything from 380 to $4 on this one in the next couple of days. The MACD, this is a... Uh, trend indicator. It also represents momentum. Uh, we won't go into the details of that. That'll be for a tutorial on MACD. Uh, but this is your MACD line, the black line here, and this is your signal line, the red line here. When the black line crosses the red line, that's bullish provided it crosses to the upside. 
when it crosses to the downside it's bearish you can see a visual representation of that cross to the downside right here so when the MACD the black line crosses the red line you'll also see the histogram cross the zero line in the direction of the MACD line in this case it crosses to the downside okay so this is a visual representation that's all that is the blue line is just a representation a visual representation of what the black and red line are doing so if you're wondering why the bars are bigger well that just represents the distance between the two lines that's all so right now we can see the MACD climbing back up but it's below the zero line if the black line crosses the red line what you'll see is a cross of the zero line okay and the best way I can describe that or show you that is visually right in through here see how the black line crosses the red line to the upside see how the blue lines cross the zero line it makes sense when the black and the red line are touching there is no space in between the two of them so there is no space for the histogram bar as that space gets bigger the histogram bars get bigger so you can see the spaces in the blue bars if you were to take them and drop them in between the red line and the black line here it would be almost exactly the distance between these two lines so that's all that is a lot of people don't know that and get too caught up you know in the uh, in the MACD this histogram here is just a visual representation of what these two lines are doing so this is your uh, trend and the trend is heading towards this signal line that's a good sign that's what we want to see again the last time it did that here the stock moved up last time it did it here the stock moved up so this means you know bold behavior if you get that cross of course you know your last indicator on my chart is the accumulation distribution and that's just a visual representation of the volume uh, when it's heading up it's a good sign when it's heading down distributors are in control heading up means you know people are accumulating the stock so we want to see this turn back up and it's starting to do that so all in all I think we've called the bottom pretty well at 350 on PAL and in the short term I think it'll be a decent trade between 381 and 4 dollars uh, that's where I'm at on it right now I've got 5,000 shares at 365 uh, so I'm green as of the close and I'm hoping we see a gap and run tomorrow you can see uh, this is the type of action I'm hoping to see a little gap in the price action because the bulls are in charge pushing it up in the pre-market and then you know it runs for a couple of days I'd love to get out of this one tomorrow. It's all going to depend on the price action. All right, hopefully that'll help you out with the technical indicators as well as where I'm at on PAL.